The repeater tool is handy for sending requests repeatedly, and you can modify these requests in order to test different kinds of input, but changing the input manually each time is time consuming. The intruder tab can help with this. You can send any request from any other tool over to the intruder by right clicking somewhere in the request field and then click send to intruder. This works from the repeater tab but it also works from other areas like the proxy history where you can do the same. Once you send these requests over to the intruder they arrive in sequence so the first one you sent will be number one, second one number two and so on. Initially you'll just see the host and the port on the first sub tab. When you move to the positions tab you'll notice these characters marking the different input fields that Burp identified. These marker indicate places where the intruder is going to insert the test injections that you feed to it. We can clear these, we can add them manually, and if we want to add them manually we highlight the area and then click the add tab. You can also ask Burp to automatically guess where the inputs are using the auto tab. But a lot of times you don't necessarily want to inject every input on the page simultaneously, especially once you get to know the application better or when you're testing for specific problems. In this case, we'll use one input field to illustrate and we'll add the markers around it. The default attack type is the sniper and in this mode Burp will take each input that you give it and put it into each position that's marked one injection at a time. So if we were to mark two positions and give it three inputs to test that would be a total of six requests because it would try the first injection in this field and then independently in this field the second in both fields and a third in both fields for a total of six. Go to the payloads tab. This is where you'll give it the injections to use. You can either load them from a file that you've already put together or you can type them in manually here. We'll go back and clear the markers and just highlight the one field we're going to test. We might send in the letters of the alphabet as baselines and then start sending in other types of input. You can send in complex statements as well. For example, ampersand ls to look for things like command injection. Note that in the free version, you're limited on the number of injections that you can do in any one test although you can split up your payloads and spread them over multiple tests if you want. When you're done setting up the attack, you click on the start attack button. In the free version, we'll get a warning about the limitations of the non-licensed version. Because we only have one field, each injection is only sent in one time. We had eight injections and we get nine responses. This is because Burp always sends the baseline request, in other words, the unmodified request, before sending the other values. Once you get the values back, you can begin your differential analysis, typically sorting by length, error, or timeout.